Hi everyone, I am Sidraju, Assistant Professor of Chemistry. Today I am going to discuss about the topic Electronic Effects. It is there in the syllabus for the BSc first semester. The title of the paper is Chemistry 1 DSC 2A. The main objectives of studying this topic is to understand the concept of electronic displacement effects, which includes the inductive effect, electromeric effect, resonance effect, hyperconjugation and the significance of electronic effects. So in this session, I am going to explain about the basic concepts of electronic displacement effects and the inductive effect only. So for that, uh, let us consider a chemical equation. It is a symbolic representation of a chemical reaction, which includes the reactants, products and the reaction conditions to be maintained as well as the energy change associated with the chemical reaction. The reactants usually consist of two species, one is substrate and another one is the reagent. Substrate is one which gets attacked during the chemical reaction. Reagent is a species which attacks the substrate during the chemical reaction. Here it is important to know not only what happens in a chemical reaction, but also how it happens. So for that, you consider a organic reaction. It essentially involves the changes in the covalent bond present in a reacting molecule. So these changes may involve the electronic displacements in covalent bond, breaking of some of the existing bonds and formation of a new bond. Now let us consider them. Then what is meant by electronic displacement in a covalent bond and how does it happen? This is what we call electronic displacement effect. So to understand the electronic displacement effect, you consider an organic compound in which the atoms are covalently bonded with one another. The electron pairs which are forming a covalent bond may undergo either partial displacement or complete, complete displa displacement. And it may be due to the influence of an atom or group present in the molecule or under the influence of appropriate attacking reagent. So this is what we call electronic displacement effect. That means the partial or complete displacement of electron pair forming a covalent bond due to the influence of an atom or group present in the molecule or under the influence of appropriate attacking reagent is called electronic displacement effect. This partial or complete displacement of electron pair forming a covalent bond results in two types of polarization in a molecule and one is permanent polarization and the second one is temporary polarization. Let us consider permanent polarization. Permanent polarization occurs in the ground state under the influence of an atom or group present in the molecule. The best example for this are inductive effect, mesomeric effect and the hyperconjugation. So let us consider temporary polarization. It occurs under the influence of an attacking reagent. The best example is electromeric effect. So we have to study these electronic effects in detail one by one. The first one is inductive effect. Let us consider a covalent bond formed between two similar atoms. Here I have taken chlorine molecule. The bonded pair of electrons are shared equally by both the atoms. Hence, there is no charge on the bonded atom. This type of covalent bond is called non-polar covalent bond. Let us consider another example. Here, the covalent bond is formed between two dissimilar atoms. See, the covalent bond is formed between hydrogen and chlorine. Here, the bonded pair of electron is not equally shared by both the atoms, hydrogen and chlorine. So, as chlorine is more electronegative when compared to the hydrogen, it pulls the shared pair of electron towards itself. 
as a result it gets it gets partial negative charge which is which is indicated by delta minus hydrogen is going to have partial positive charge which is indicated by delta plus see the polarity is produced in this molecule so this type of covalent bond is called polar covalent bond and this effect is called inductive effect that means the polarity produced in the molecule due to the partial displacement of electron pair forming a sigma bond towards the more electronegative atom is called the inductive effect so this inductive effect can be better understood by taking another example that is ch3 cl see you consider here the bond between the carbon and chlorine are polar in nature it is because the chlorine is more electronegative when compared to the carbon it pulls the shared pair of electron towards itself hence it carries delta minus partial negative charge and it the carbon will going to have partial positive charge so it is what the inductive effect so you consider another example in which the chlorine is attached to a carbon chain so as usual so due to the inductive effect it is going to have a partial negative charge this carbon is going to have a partial positive charge as a result of this this carbon will become somewhat electron deficient thereby it pulls the shared pair of electron towards itself as a result this carbon will going to have still lesser partial positive charge which is indicated by delta delta plus this carbon in turn pulls the shared pair of electron towards itself as a result this carbon will going to have still lesser partial positive charge indicated by delta 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 plus actually uh, the inductive effect transmits through the carbon chain and it almost negligible after the carbon number 3 so when we study the inductive effect these points to be remembered now it is a permanent effect inductive effect is a permanent effect has the displacement takes place due to the presence of atom or group which is present in the molecule so it occurs in sigma bonds formed between atoms of different electronegativity we cannot expect the inductive effect when a sigma bond is between the two atoms having the same electronegativity the partial charge produced is transmits along the chain and it decreases as it moves away from the substituent that is what we saw when the chlorine is attached to a long carbon chain then inductive effect is of two types one is positive inductive effect and another one is negative inductive effect see the positive inductive effect which is indicated as plus i effect which occurs when an electron donating group relative to hydrogen atom is attached to a molecule let us consider this reaction here here the y is substituted to the molecule you consider it is a big molecule to which y is being substituted being attached here see as this is a electron donating group the electron pair forming a sigma bond is partially displaces towards the carbon as a result it is having delta minus partial negative charge and it is having a partial positive charge so this type of effect is called positive inductive effect that means the inductive effect which involves the partial displacement of electron pair forming a sigma bond away from the substituent is called a positive inductive effect so we shall consider the groups which can show the positive inductive effect in the in decreasing order see c ch3 thrice is showing more inductive effect when compared to ch ch3 twice which shows more inductive effect when compared to ch2 ch3 it shows more inductive effect when compared to ch3 so let us consider negative inductive effect which is indicated as minus i effect it occurs when an electron withdrawing group relative to hydrogen atom is attached to a molecule let us consider this the group x is electron withdrawing in nature thereby it pulls the shared pair of electron towards itself as a result it is going to have partial negative charge and it is going to have partial positive charge 
that means the inductive effect which involves the partial displacement of electron pair forming a sigma bond towards the substitutive end is called a negative inductive effect. The group that can show the negative inductive effect are arranged in the decreasing order. CnO2 it shows more negative inductive effect when compared to Cn. It shows more negative inductive effect when compared to fluorine. It shows more negative inductive effect when compared to COOH. Now, let us consider the significances of inductive effect. The first one is this. The concept of inductive effect can be used to explain the reactivity of alkyl halides. See, the alkyl halides are more reactive when compared to the corresponding alkanes. This is due to the presence of CX bond. See, this CX bond is polar in nature due to the negative inductive effect of halogen and it creates a reaction site in the molecule which we cannot found in the respective or corresponding alkanes. Further, as the branch increases, the reactivity of alkyl halide will also increases. See, isopropyl halide is more reactive when compared to the ethyl halide and we can take one more example, tertiary butyl halide are more reactive when compared to the isopropyl halide. Another point to be considered here, the dipole moment of a molecule can be explained by considering the inductive effect. Since the inductive effect leads to some dipole character in the molecule, it develops a dipole moment in the molecule. So, as the negative inductive effect increases, dipole moment will also increases. Let us consider an example here, CH3Cl, CH3F, CH3Br and CH3I. Here, the dipole moment of CCl bond is more when compared to CF bond, it is more when compared to CBr, it is more when compared to CI. Actually, as the negative inductive effect increases, dipole moment increases. So, according to that, the fluorine is more electronegative, it shows more negative inductive effect when compared to the chlorine, bromine and iodine. So, CH3F supposed to have more dipole moment, but it is not because of the smaller size of fluorine the dipole moment of CH3F is lesser when compared to CH3Cl. Another thing we shall consider is a bond length. Inductive effect can be used to explain the bond length in a molecule. Since the inductive effect leads to the ionic character in a bond, increase in negative inductive effect decreases the bond length. So, we shall consider this example CH3F which is having lesser bond length, CF bond is lesser when compared to CCL bond, it is less when compared to CBR, it is less when compared to CI. Of course, other factors will also operate here, which I am not considering here because, because it is uh, beyond the scope of the topic what I am discussing. Uh, strength of carboxylic acids, it can be explained by considering the concept of inductive effect. Uh, let us consider a carboxylic acid represented by the general formula or C double bond O, OH. The strength of carboxylic acid depends on the ease with which the carboxylic acid ionizes to give a proton or C double bond O then O minus plus H plus. The molecule of carbon carboxylic acid can be represented as a resonance hybrid of the following structure. So, R C double bond O, then O single bond H. There are two lone pair of electrons present on the oxygen which are, in, which are involved in the delocalization. R C single bond O minus double bond O, it going to have a positive charge, then the hydrogen. Observe this structure. There is a positive charge on the oxygen atom of hydroxyl group. As a result of this, it attracts the shared pair of electron towards itself due to the inductive effect. As a result of this, we can remove the hydrogen as a proton 
and the carboxyl data ion produced get stabilized through the resonance. I will consider this concept of resonance in my next class when I am going to explain about the mesomeric effect. So then the concept of inductive effect can be used to compare the strength of carboxylic acids. Let us consider two carboxylic acids. One is chloroacetic acid and another one is acetic acid. So, in case of chloroacetic acid also, there are two lone pair of electrons on the oxygen which are involved in the delocalization and it will going to have this resonance hybrid Cl, CH2, then C single bond O minus, then there is a double bond, a positive charge, then single bond hydrogen. So, here the positively charged oxygen atom pulls the shared pair of electron towards itself, it is fine. In addition to this, you observe this chlorine. It is electronegative in nature, so it shows the negative inductive effect and this negative inductive effect transmits through this carbon chain. As a result of this, this OH bond becomes still weaker and the hydrogen can be removed as a proton very easily. But in case of acetic acid, here also the delocalization of electron present on the oxygen atom can be represented like this and it is going to have this structure CH3, C it is single bond O minus, it is double bond O plus then H. So, it pull the shared pair of electron towards itself no doubt at all. Then you compare this group CH3, it is a electron donating group, it shows the positive inductive effect and it transmits through this chain. As a result of this, the bond between oxygen and hydrogen becomes stronger and it is not easy to remove the hydrogen as a proton when compared to chloroacetic acid. So, that is why chloroacetic acid is a stronger acid when compared to the acetic acid. That means to say the presence of group showing negative inductive effect increases the strength of an acid and the presence of group which shows the positive inductive effect decreases the strength of a carboxylic acid. And then strength of bases. The concept of inductive effect can also be used to explain the strength of bases. Let us consider two base, one is ammonia NH3, another one is amine. NH2CH3 I have considered methyl amine. There is a lone pair of electron on the nitrogen. So, according to Levy's concept, a substance which can donate a pair of electron is called a base. So, here the lone pair of electron which is present on the nitrogen of a ammonia is easily available, the, available for the protonation or for the reaction. Hence, it is a base in nature. If you consider this methyl amine, no doubt there is a pair of electron on the nitrogen atom. So, you look at the presence of this methyl group, it is a electron donating group, it shows the positive inductive effect. So, as a result of this nitrogen will become richer in electron and the availability of electron present on the nitrogen is more for the protonation for the reaction when compared to ammonia. Hence, methyl amine is more basic when compared to ammonia. That means to say the presence of group which shows the positive inductive effect increases the strength of a base. The presence of group which shows the negative inductive effect decreases the strength of a base. This is how we can explain the strength of bases. So, so far in this class I have explained about the electronic effects particularly about the inductive effect and their significance. So, I will stop at this stage and I will continue in the next class with the electromeric effect and mesomeric effect. Thank you very much.